What is up people, Dunna here, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at how to place text behind an image in Photoshop, or more specifically, how to place text behind an object inside an image in Photoshop. This is something we see all over the place. The thing that comes to mind for me is magazine covers when you have the celebrity on the front and then the text saying the title of the magazine is kind of behind their head. This is also something that I love to use in my thumbnails for my videos. It allows me to get some text into the thumbnail so that there's something to read to give context for what the video is, but it can still make it so that the subject is the forefront of the image. I'm gonna show you two different methods on how to do this, things that I use depending on the situation, depending on the image, and don't worry, it's super simple. Let's hop into it. Okay, so I've got this thumbnail photo that I took and I've pulled it up in Lightroom. I've got most of my basic edits already done. It started like that, super overexposed, and I edited it down to this. So that is kind of where I'm happy with it and I want to do a couple of things and get the text in there. So I'm going to hit Command E or if I right click and go edit in, Adobe Photoshop, and then it'll pull this image up in Photoshop. And we wait for it to load and maybe have a sip of coffee. Okay, so we've got our photo here. And the first thing that I wanna do is, you can see my microphone and a light up on the top there. So I'm just gonna try and really quickly get rid of those. I'm just going to select my background. I'm gonna grab the marquee tool. Just draw a little bit around there. Go to edit, content aware fill. Usually this works pretty good. Look at that. And then command D, we'll get rid of our selection. Good enough for me. Now, time for text. So I wanna put the word secrets behind me just to kind of add intrigue. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the text tool or you can hit T. Now I'm gonna type the word secrets. Wow, why is it so small? I'm gonna change the font to this Bebas new bold, and then I'm gonna make it bigger. There we go. And make the color white. Okay, so this is the this is the text that I want in there. I'm gonna spread it out a little bit here. Okay, so as you can see, I've got my text now, but it's covering my face, so I want it to not be doing that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it look like the text is behind me, but in front of the background. There are a couple of different ways that you can do this. First of all, you can select the text layer and you can add a mask with the mask selected. If you hit B, it'll bring up a brush. Change the size of that uh, using the square bracket. And then down here are your brush colors. So right now the whole mask is white, which means that it's showing everything and we want it to be black. So you can hit X and it'll switch those. And now when I paint in, I can get rid of this. So I can just paint out the parts that I don't want. And if I accidentally paint out parts that I do want, all I have to do is hit X again and it changes the, the brush to white. You can see how I toggle through black and white there. So if I change it to white, and then I can do that. If you need to change the hardness, you can go up here and do that. So we can get it like that. Now, personally, this works for kind of refining things, but it would be a huge pain to have to go all the way around. So I'm gonna get rid of this mask. Delete the mask. And we're actually gonna hide this for now. I'm gonna choose my layer that has me and the camera and stuff on it. And I'm actually gonna go to select and I'm gonna go to select subject. Sometimes it doesn't work, but generally I find it does a pretty good job. Now it's made a selection. You can see it's, it's pretty good. It's grabbed a little bit of this plant in the background here. And then this is the light that we can't see right now, but it's, uh, it's hidden up there kind of around here. Now for the most part, we don't have to worry about a lot of this. Uh, we just gotta fix up a couple of things and then we should be good to go. So we're gonna refine our mask. I'm gonna grab my quick selection tool by holding down on this and going to quick selection. 
and then I'm going to hold down either Option or Alt, depending on if you're Mac or PC, and that's going to subtract from our selection. And then I'm gonna kind of paint over and you'll see it'll snap in there. Now that one's looking pretty good. I'm gonna do the same thing up here, holding Alt or Option. Get rid of that. Anywhere else? There's this little guy, let's get rid of that. Okay, that's looking a little better. I don't think I really need to worry about this, but that's okay, let's do it anyway. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So, if I pull this back up, now all I have to do, I have this selection made, all I have to do is select my text now, and I'm going to hold Option or Alt again if you're on uh, PC, and I'm going to hit Add Layer Mask, make sure, making sure that I'm selected on my text layer. And bam, if I zoom back out, you can see that it's worked. So it's basically done the mask for us. You can see if we look down here at this mask, it looks like the shape of me and the camera. We can go around and kind of check our edges and make sure that we're feeling pretty good about them. Now, this is a point where you could go back in and do some more fine tuning, specifically with that brush tool again, like I said before. So we can grab our brush tool by hitting B and we can make it smaller. And you see how it's kind of jagged in here. It hasn't done a great job of, uh, of selecting the edges. Sometimes I'll just go in and kind of paint this. So I'm still selected on my mask. I've got the brush tool out. And what I want to do is, oops, sorry, make sure I'm on black. And just paint that in there a little bit. Maybe I won't make it quite so hard. It's kind of chopping off my ear a little bit there. And to my eye, that's pretty good, especially for like a YouTube thumbnail that would totally be as good as it needs to be. If you wanna get more detailed with it, you can get into more masking and that kind of stuff and, and get really, really nitpicky with it. You can also get more nitpicky with the selection that happens in the first part of the process. I do find that that select subject works pretty well most of the time and you can refine that selection that it's made and uh, and that can help you as well. But for the most part, I think that's looking pretty good. Now, one thing to note is that if you want to move the text around afterwards, you wanna make sure that you turn off this little link because it's linking the layer to the mask. So let's turn that off. And then now, if I select the text itself, I can move it around and the mask stays intact. Whereas if that was, the link was still on there, if I try and move it, it's gonna move the mask with it. You can see the shape of my head and my hat inside the uh, text there. So we wanna turn off that link and now we can freely move the text wherever we want and it'll keep with that mask. You can also move the mask by accident, so make sure you're not selected on the mask because if you do that, now I'm just moving the mask around. So that's how to place text behind an image in Photoshop, the way that I like to do it anyway, but I always wanna hear from you guys. Do you think you have a different way that works better in your workflow? Make sure to leave a comment down below and let me know. And on your way down there, hit that like and subscribe button and hit the bell notification so you get told when I have new videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.